Hey y'all, so originally I wanted to hold off on making a video until I got this thing to fly, but I actually got a ton of useful comments from my first video and hope that this update video will inspire some more tips from the people who watch this. So here's where I'm at now. Um, quick overview again, all parts are printed from PLA+. Plus. I have four 5000 kV motors running 3D printed EDFs that aren't producing much thrust yet. Um, I'm using a SpeedyB flight controller stack and this whole assembly is weighing in currently at 271 grams. So since my last update, I made a larger frame that accommodates these 60 millimeter EDFs instead of the previous 30 mil ones. It's pretty much the same design, just scaled up with some weight reduction added on the frame. I forgot to actually weigh out the frames, but according to the Cure Slicer, there's only a 10 gram difference, which isn't too bad considering I doubled the EDF size. So one of the main tips from last video was centering the battery on the frame which weighs over half of the entire loaded quad. And at first, I didn't think my original battery placement was a huge issue, uh, but I realized that, especially in the testing phase, I want to have the center of gravity closest to the geometric center, um, which is in the middle for this because this is a symmetrical plane, as much as possible. These unequally distributed lows obviously causes motor wear, um, lower flight times, but most importantly in this context, it probably causes weird takeoff dynamics that I don't want to deal with yet. However, by the time I had realized that I wanted to actually center the battery. Um, I had already printed this bigger frame, and so I used a carbon fiber board and struts from my old 4S 3-inch whoop build that I made a video on a few months ago and just attached it to the frame. I actually didn't have a drill on hand or anything, so I just poked some holes in with my soldering iron and it turned out fine. So I'm now able to put the battery in a pretty optimized place uh, with help from this Velcro strap over here. And the only other major change from last video is the fan design. So I decided to man up and learn some surfacing on SolidWorks, which turned out to be pretty easy. I've surface modeled on Fusion before. Um, SolidWorks is actually almost more intuitive, I think, to pick up. But anyway, surfacing allows me to produce complex geometries that more accurately copy proven fan profiles that I can find online. There's obviously a million different ways um, you can make an EDF and everything is on the internet. The constraint here, of course, is the actual manufacturing of the fans. And so using my thrust lever rig, which I also made a video on, I tested a bunch of fans and was able to surface model and print um, to a pretty decent detail. Again, these are not my designs. Well, not like entirely. I mostly copied popular fan designs I found on 40 to 70 millimeter EDFs. This particular one performed the best. So I tried to scale it down from the 70 millimeter model I've been using to test to one that fits my quad, which is again about 60 millimeters. Um, the problem with this is that the proportion of the motors from my testing rig compared to these tiny quad motors is a lot different. So scaling it down is actually pretty awkward geometrically. I also only printed five blades compared to the seven that I use on my test model. Um, I'm not exactly sure why there was a reason that I had in my head back then. Anyways, this is my current fan design. Uh, but I doubt it's actually an effective one. So another issue I had with these fans is them staying on the motor axle. I had printed multiple test prints to make sure I got a nice fit on the axles, but I could never get the fan to stay on for more than a couple of tests, even if I super glued them down to the axle. I attribute this to the insane amount of torsion force there must be between the axle and the fan, which could deform this relatively soft PLA pretty quickly, um, whereas a normal you know, casted propeller is more resistant um, to those friction forces. So again, it doesn't fly yet, and it's kind of hard to tell how close I am. I do have some ideas going forward, and they all revolve around the EDF design. Number one is blade manufacturing. I was playing around with the modular blade technique, where I print each blade individually, then super glue them into the hub. Vertically printing these blades without supports allows me to print in a lot better detail. Currently, I'm just lying the fan flat on the board, using supports for the curves and the pitch angle of the fan blades. The problem is that these supports cause uneven surfaces and it doesn't allow any fine detail to come out, which leads to a bunch of dynamic imbalances and has a huge effect on thrust output and sound. These modular blades can print in a lot better precision without the supports because it just prints straight up, um, at least in theory. In practice, it's actually still hard to dial in blades that can fit smoothly into the fan hub, especially at this size. And it's a lot more work to print and sand and glue each blade down, especially when I have four fans to make and potentially seven to nine blades. But this might be worth it, especially since 
I want to surface model more and my blades can hopefully become more complex. So number two is putting the fans on the motor casings. I've seen some designs online that attaches the fan to the EDF right on the motor casing. There's a term for the motor casing, I don't know what it is, but I really like this idea, especially because it could potentially solve the issue uh, of these fans coming off, these really tiny like 1.5 mil axles. And it would also simplify the manufacturing process a little bit. Um, so I don't have to design like a, a fan hub here. So yeah, definitely something worthwhile I want to pursue. Again, especially since these motors are so small. And the third is gap control. There's a really good suggestion made by this YouTuber named Chris where I could oversize the fans and then spin them inside the ducts, letting the friction sand down the fans until it has a gap smaller than one I could ever tolerance with a machine. And so I did a good amount of reading on this and um, this does seem like a worthwhile pursuit. There is this NASA study of ducted fans and here's just a quick quote from the intro. It says that as the tip clearance ratios increase, the duct thrust drops off dramatically. And so although there isn't like an analytical solution for this relationship yet, it's enough for me to be concerned, a lot more concerned than I was about tip clearance right here. You can see I have a couple mil in between the fan and the ducts, and this amount of clearance probably eliminates the advantage of the ducts entirely. Yeah, so these are the three things I'm gonna target for my next iteration. Any and all comments and critiques or suggestions are welcome. I really would like to get this thing in the air so I don't have to spend a bunch of money on four separate EDFs. Again, the goal is to make something cheap and fully 3D printed. So thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you guys for sticking around and contributing, and I'll see you in the next update.